forgot to do an intro. Um, I made a soup with beets today. Hi! <laughs> it has been a while. I am in college now. But it's been great. I moved across the country. I'm studying something I want to. It's been really good. It's probably been more than a year since I've made a video. But I just, you know, I missed it. So I, need, I felt the need to uh, start making more. I don't know if these will be regular. In fact, I'm not gonna promise anything because every time I do, it doesn't happen. I do like making videos and I have lots of concepts for videos I wanna make, but these probably won't be very regular. But yeah, it's good to see you guys again, all 192 of you or something. But I'm back. But today I wanted to talk about Fantastic Beasts. Specifically, I'm nervous. Fantastic Beasts is based on a textbook in the Harry Potter universe that was written by a man named Newt Scamander, who is a magizoologist, which means a guy who studied magical creatures. He just had a textbook that exists in the Harry Potter universe, but now they're making five movies about Newt Scamander, the author. Two of them have come out, the third one's on its way, and they make me nervous. <laughs> Ever since I read Cursed Child, which I'm gonna do a video about. But ever since I read Cursed Child, I sort of gave up faith in the author, in J.K. Rowling, being able to write something that was truly Harry Potter. Not that she wrote Cursed Child. <laughs> Fantastic Beasts was an interesting concept to me. I remember when it was announced that these were being made. I was super excited about it. Super, super, super excited about it. Because I'm part of the generation that, well, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter, but I didn't grow up with them being published, you know? They were already published. I didn't have to wait at Barnes & Noble to get the next one. I didn't have that level of uh, excitement with the Harry Potter series just because I'd never experienced that before. And so I found out that Fantastic Beasts was happening and I was so stinking excited because it was the first Harry Potter thing that had come out while I was alive and could remember it. And Fantastic Beast was an interesting concept. I looked at it and I was like, there's so many things she can do with this. I was excited. I remember where I was when like I was going through theories with my dad and uh, we were on the Green River because we did a week long trip on that as a family reunion, which is super cool. Best vacation ever. I remember like talking about what I thought the Harry Potter series and what it was going to look like because I think we had just seen the first one at that point and I had all these theories and I was like, this is where she's going to go with it. Like, the obscurial that Newt has in his suitcase is a whole nother thing that I'll probably talk about at some other point because I've got lots of theories. But I do remember being disappointed in J.K. Rowling's decision to, to not show Dumbledore and Grindelwald's relationship as romantic. Because she had uh, written, she posted on her Twitter after the Harry Potter series were published that Dumbledore was gay. And this was like a big thing for fans, right? People were like, oh my gosh, representation. Even though they weren't mentioned in the books, at that point, I think people did respect the fact that it really didn't have much to do with Harry Potter's story. We never saw Dumbledore married. There was no excuse for him to... I mean, he was old. He wasn't dating people. So it, it just wasn't something that came up. And I think a lot of fans were like, okay, that makes sense. And now we get to have fun with fan fictions and headcanons and all sorts of stuff. For me, when I found that out, I was like, oh my gosh. That makes the Dumbledore Grindelwald story so much more compelling. And then I saw Fantastic Beasts. I've seen the first two now, because they're both out. And I tell you what, I was really impressed with the first one. I loved Tina as a character. I've never seen a female character like her before, where she is so lawful, um, but yet her own form of law, right? Even though she wasn't allowed to be an Auror anymore. She was fired. She still felt the need to turn Newt in for what he was doing. And that's such an interesting concept to me. And she was so, she was so different. And I really enjoyed her character. And then the second movie came out and felt that all of that was removed from who she was as a person. She is Newt's love interest. We know they get married because it's in the textbooks that JK Rowling wrote. 
for that charity. I forget exactly the details, but she wrote Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts as little, little, little books. And in it, there's an autobiography, autobiography, a biography from Newt that talks about his wife and his four measles, pet measles and stuff. But we know that he marries Tina. And in the second movie, all of her coolness, all of the character we had seen in the first movie sort of removed itself. It fell by the wayside. She was a little bland. She was bland and I felt that she was just there to create conflict romantically and I was like, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted from Tina. But it's all good. There's other things that I'm very excited about. I'm very excited about Queenie's character development. That's such an interesting thing to me that, that um, I feel could be cool. But I am a little bit worried about it. And then of course the way the second movie ended, Grindelwald was telling Credence that he was a Dumbledore. If that's true, I'm gonna punch someone in the face. Because personally, I interpreted that as Grindelwald just trying to manipulate Credence. If it's true. <laughs> the whole baby story, I don't know. That's a whole nother thing though. What I want to talk specifically about is J.K. Rowling's missed opportunity with the relationship between Dumbledore and Grindelwald. There is such a wide open space to make that such a compelling, amazing story. And she just discarded it. And it was a cool concept. When she said that Dumbledore was gay and that Grindelwald and Dumbledore were sort of in like a relationship, you know? I actually don't know if that was confirmed, but it's fairly obvious. She opened this window of opportunity to explain why Dumbledore had such a hard time going after Grindelwald. We all know the story, right? Dumbledore and Grindelwald were childhood friends. Dumbledore felt he was held back by his family. It all came together when Aberforth, him, and Grindelwald got into a fight and their sister Ariana ended up dying. They weren't sure who cast the curse. They weren't sure how she died. They just knew that it was one of them. And Dumbledore was like, I, I can't go on this world trip with you anymore, Grindelwald. And so he left and they didn't talk. And then Grindelwald tried to take over the world and Dumbledore eventually fought him. And that's how he came to own the Elder Wand. There's a huge space in between when Dumbledore and Grindelwald went their separate ways and when they battled. There's a huge space there. And we know from Rita Skeeter's book about Dumbledore that, that appears in the seventh book, we know from that book that Dumbledore had a really hard time going after Grindelwald. He was probably the only person who could defeat him. He was one of the most powerful people, wizards in the world at that time. And he put off going after Grindelwald for a long time. And for me, when J.K. Rowling said that Dumbledore was gay, I was like, Oh my gosh, it makes so much sense now. Obviously, Dumbledore still held some kind of love for Grindelwald. And we know this because of the stuff Dumbledore overlooked from being friends with Grindelwald. Grindelwald from the very beginning wanted the Deathly Hollows, and Dumbledore did too. But Grindelwald also wanted to enslave muggles, and he thought that wizards were the dominant race, and all these things. All things that Dumbledore didn't necessarily agree with, but that he went with because of his relationship with Grindelwald. To me, that makes a lot more sense if Dumbledore was in love with Grindelwald, right? If they were in love, I think Dumbledore would be more likely to overlook those questionable aspects of him because he was in love with him. That can work with a friendship, but it's just a little bit less compelling. It's a less good story. That's really the thing I think J.K. Rowling missed out on. The story is so much more compelling with that love in the story. I really don't care what your standards are, whether or not you think it's good or bad or a sin or whatever. It's a better story. And I think there are some things that when you're telling stories, you need to sacrifice some of your own personal beliefs to make the story what it can be. To hinder such personal belief, and I'm not trying to attack J.K. Rowling, I have opinions on J.K. Rowling, I probably won't ever share them on this channel, but to let your personal beliefs affect the story is... I have such an issue with it. To a certain extent, when writing a story, sometimes you have to sacrifice personal beliefs in order to make that story more compelling. The issue I really have is that it's a much better story. 
And this was J.K. Rowling's opportunity to really show that she actually cared about the LGBTQ community. She wasn't just doing it for the monetary gain. And instead, she didn't. And I think that was a mistake. Whether or not I think that is really J.K. Rowling's personal belief, I do think it was a mistake. That was a better story for them to be in love. And you could show it a lot better in the movies. You see this whole thing that Dumbledore and Grindelwald made a blood oath, right? Which is cool. And friends do that. Of course they do. I mean, the story still works with a friendship. But think about how much more emotional and compelling and realistic that story is if they were in love. If Dumbledore really did love Grindelwald. Having him send Newt to get the vial from Grindelwald makes sense when he can't even look him in the face because he still loves him. It's just so much more compelling and so much more understandable and it just makes a little bit more sense if they were in love, which is my personal subscription. Like I personally believe that. It just makes for a better story. And it's what J.K. Rowling said before, right? She went back on her word a little bit. And to let that affect her story, I think was a mistake. It was a big mistake. It would have been better. Do I think it's a bad story the way it is now? No, there are other things I'm worried about, but the story still works with them just being friends. And I don't think J.K. Rowling ever said that they weren't gay in the movies, but she did say that they she wouldn't depict them being explicitly gay. Which, define that how you will, but I do think she missed out on an opportunity though. It was a better story with them being in love. And there's lots of other things I'm worried about with Fantastic Beasts, but this is the thing that really annoys me because it was just a better story. And as someone who likes writing, I can see that. You know, it's a much better story if they were in love and they had that tangible relationship and it works as a friendship, but it would have been better as a love story, which I don't say often. <laughs> a lot of the times I think the opposite, but in this particular case, I do think it's true. Uh, and yeah. That's about it. Um, yeah, that's the end of the video. Hopefully this becomes more regular. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>